you. I'm going to sort of almost teach with one single image. I'm going to put it in straight away. We're talking about joint movements, and specifically, I want to talk to you about the types of synovial joint. Now, before we get into the types, I just want you to know what an SJ, a synovial joint, actually is. It is a freely, well, it's actually written down here, guys. You can see it's a freely movable joint. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in. A freely movable, movable joint. Okay, so it <laughs> it moves once it's had force applied via muscles onto bones, right? That's what the muscles do. So freely movable joint surrounded, surrounded, surrounded by a synovial capsule, by a synovial. And we'll talk about synovial capsules in more detail uh, in a different lesson, by a synovial capsule, okay? By a synovial capsule and a joint, it's a joint that allows movement. Now, obviously, the freely movable nature is clear from uh, the, sort of the movement side. That sort of does what it says on the tin, right? But that's what we need to understand. Now, I, th I guess one of the ways to understand a freely movable joint is just to understand or have reference to the fact there are non-freely movable joints. We have some that are called slightly movable joints or cartilaginous joints, they're in the spine. We have others that have uh, uh, immovable or fixed or fused joints. And they're things like uh, the joint of the different plates of your head, for example, or how your coccyx fuses to your uh, sacrum, for example, but we aren't gonna go into that today. Now, we're gonna look at one two types of synovial joint and the two types that we're going to look at are specifically the hinge and the ball and socket but notice this little asterisk here we take obviously we're saying what these things are we do have other synovial joints in the body as well so we have things like condyloid joints we have things like pivot joints we have things like saddle joints but in this course we're going to focus on hinge uh, and ball and socket so where are these joints well, we are going to focus on hinge first. We have got a knee and we have got an elbow. Just for reference, there's also the ankle as a hinge, but we'll come back to that maybe at a different level of study. So let's focus on the knee first. Not news to us, obviously, the knee, but what we can say first of all is that the knee is an articulation of the femur. There it is, longest bone of the body. And it's an also an articulation of the tibia. Now notice that I have not included the fibula here. Notice the fibula here at the posterior back view of this bone, notice it does not connect to the knee. It does not articulate it at the knee. So that is not an articulating bone. But I do want to stress to you that the patella is part of the knee joint, but it does not actually form the joint itself, okay? It sits above the joint. So just be aware of that. But our articulating bones are the femur and the tibia. And you see that from the back here. Look, we can see these bones connected here and here. Now, a couple of things I also want to stress about the knee. They only allow for flexion and extension, okay? Flexion and extension. And I just wanna make sure you guys, we've covered this a little bit and we certainly will in the movement analysis sort of lessons, but let's think about flexion and extension. Flexion and extension is bending and straightening. We could talk bending and straightening. So if you can imagine that this kind of like, kind of curled up behind here, that would be flexion. And when it's straightened back out, it would be extension of that knee, okay? So that's what we're talking about there. Now our other hinge joint that we're gonna to refer to is the elbow. So let's just re-familiarize with the elbow. The elbow has three articulating bones. So of course, you know, feel free to uh, turn, pause me and figure out what these are. But we have the humerus, nothing funny about that up here. We also have two bones that articulate below the elbow. So the one on the thumb side here, this one is what we call the radius. So on the thumb side is the radius. But if I was to go a little bit further and to show you, look, on the pinky side, over here, here's the pinky side. On the pinky side, this is the ulna. So we have three bones articulating at the elbow. Now the good news about the elbow is even though there's more bones involved, all the elbow can do is to flex. So we've got flexion and it can return back to a straight position and that is extension. So we've got lots of overlap there with the knee. Nice, simple understanding. One would hope and we're gonna take that further look in the sporting examples and other tutorials. Now let's have a look at our ball and socket joints. Now before we sort of get into the naming of these, I've included two. One's the hip, let me, let me actually put them in. We've got the hip and we've got the shoulder. Just using the green to highlight the areas more than anything. But a couple of things I'd like to notice is these are both ball and socket joints, but just want you to sort of spot, for example, if you look at the ball at the top of the humerus, you see how it's kind of, it's in the socket, but it kind of, 
you know, it's only just in, whereas this one down here, it's like really buried deep into the socket in the pelvis. Like that's an interesting point to sort of reflect on because that might affect things like mobility and flexibility. Think about how flexible your hip joint is compared to your shoulder joint. Why might that be the case? Now I'll just sort of, uh, I'll just sort of pose that as a rhetorical question at this point, but it's something you might want to consider. What we do want to do for sure though is recognize that this, I'm going to refer to it as the pelvis at the moment. The pelvis is actually a collective term for a few different bones, so I'll just refer to that at the moment. And we want to understand that the other articulating bone is the femur. So if we come back to what we said about the knee, the femur articulates at both the hip and the knee. So the top of the femur articulates at the hip, the bottom of the femur articulates at the knee. So it's actually an interesting point about bones in general there. Now, if we go across to the shoulder before we look at movement patterns, let me choose, I don't know, like a, a bluish color. We have got our humerus again. Okay, that's the long bone in this case. There's the humerus. And we've also got this bone here. Now, this bone is your scapula. Please ensure you don't write clavicle here. It happens so many times with students, but this is the shoulder blade, the scapula. Now, this is where it becomes important. I'll focus on the, the shoulder here as the example, but it could equally work with the, the hip. If the shoulder, this is, of course, this is the back view, guys. So we're looking at the back of this person here. You can see that, right? We're looking sort of at the back. If this arm at the shoulder was to go in front of this person, you know, imagine if you're pointing your arm out straight in front of you, that is flexion. And we'll come back to this in more detail. If you sort of put your arm via the shoulder behind you, that is extension of the shoulder, not the elbow, not the wrist, shoulder. If you bring your arm out, sort of away from your body here, this is abduction. This would be the same for the hip. If we were to now bring the arm back in like this, that is adduction, bringing the arm back to the midline via the shoulder. So those four movement patterns are really important. You can apply them again at the hip in the same way. But to finish this off, I also wanna to mention to you two further movements. If I was to take flexion, if I was to take extension, if I was to take abduction and adduction and combine them, imagine you're doing something like an overarm bowling in cricket. If you add those four movements together, we get a movement or collective pattern called circumduction. And it is the circling of the arm around the shoulder joint, a combination of flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction is called circumduction. Classic example, overarm bowling in cricket. But there's something else a human being can do. A human being can also pivot this bone in the actual socket, okay? And that is what we refer to as rotation. So do me a favor, where, wherever you are now, just sort of put your arm down by your side and turn your whole humerus from front to back rotation. Now you might wanna think about what kind of sporting movements that's involved with. It's involved in a lot actually, lots of uh, racket sport, um, um, uh, things like tennis strokes for example. It's also involved in like spin bowling and cricket, this kind of thing. But just be aware that you might need to differentiate between rotation and circumduction. More application of these concepts in our coming tutorials when we look at movement analysis. Thank you.